Hey everyone, before I move on to the fourth video in my The Solution series, I wanted to respond to some specific comments, some specific feedback from part three. Now, I was going to just incorporate this into the beginning of part four, but after thinking about it, I realized that this probably deserved its own video. Now, in part three, I asked, I issued a challenge, if you want to call it that, a challenge for someone to come up with some way we reform the system. Because I don't want a collapse. I'm not looking forward to a collapse. But I really see no other way of things going down. The system is going to collapse. But I did receive some feedback, and I want to answer that in a respectful manner. So the proposed plan effectively involved appealing to people's rational sense of self-preservation. Convince them that the system is unsustainable, that reforms are needed, or everyone's going to suffer. Get them to understand that the party's over and it's time to be responsible. And while I appreciate the sentiment and they're absolutely right, it's not going to work. People don't think that way. People don't act that way. People will not change their behavior until the pain starts. You can appeal to them all day long. I mean, you could use several different examples to demonstrate this. In fact, I'll choose two. One is obesity. Now, when people get fat, they know that being fat is unhealthy, that it causes health problems, that it's uncomfortable. You have no energy, you have back problems, clothes don't fit right. There's really no upsides to being fat. So why do people let themselves get fat? Because they have no self-control. They're slaves to their emotions, they're slaves to their urges. Now what causes people to lose weight? Is it telling them they're fat? Is it warning them about the health problems? No. It's usually some event that causes pain. Pain allows them to get the strength, the willpower, if you will, to overcome their addictions and lose weight. So in MGTOW, we try to reach men and warn them about female nature. But men who haven't been hurt don't believe us. They're like, oh, you guys are just bitter, closeted homos. What do you know? And then they go out and they get hurt. And that pain gets them to reevaluate their situation. Like, you know, maybe those MGTOWs know what the fuck they're talking about. Maybe I should listen to them. Maybe because what they're saying is matching my reality, now I need to consider what they're saying a little bit deeper. But it's the pain that is the catalyst for their change. Until that pain is experienced, they're not ready for change. Not painful change. Nobody likes to do things that are painful unless the alternative is more painful. Dieting and exercise is painful. We are depriving ourselves of the joy, the happiness that eating junk food and not exercising gives us. It is only when we understand that it is more painful to be obese than it is to exercise and diet that we will exercise and diet. We will always choose the path of least resistance, at least as a group. The exceptions are not going to disprove the rule. So most men do not want to be MGTOW at least until they experience enough pain to make the alternative more painful than becoming a MGTOW. People don't respond to rational arguments. You can give them all the information they want. I mean, the nutritional label is on all the food and people get obese anyway, with the calories and the fat content right there on the box. Information is not the problem. People will act according to their instincts, their urges, their desires. It is only pain which changes behavior. And when you understand this, you'll understand why we will not change course until it's too late. Now, the catalyst of what I believe will be the financial collapse of the United States, possibly even the West, and however that may spread, we don't know what a major global financial collapse would do. It may kick off World War III, it may lead to billions of people dying, it may be the end of mankind, or it may be something relatively benign, like when the Soviet Union collapsed. I don't know. The nature of chaos is that it's unpredictable. But I do know it's coming. And nobody's going to listen to reason until it's too late. And to demonstrate this, let's talk about entitlements in the US, namely Social Security. Now, we've been told for over 50 years that Social Security is a welfare program. It's not insurance. The FICA taxes you pay are no different than any other tax. If you don't believe me, here's Ronald Reagan from 1964. But 
They've called it insurance to us in a hundred million pieces of literature. But then they appeared before the Supreme Court and they testified it was a welfare program. They only used the term insurance to sell it to the people. And they said Social Security dues are a tax for the general use of the government. And the government has used that tax. There is no fund. Because Robert Byers, the actuarial head, appeared before a congressional committee and admitted that Social Security as of this moment is $298 billion in the hole. But he said there should be no cause for worry because as long as they had the power to tax, they could always take away from the people whatever they needed to bail them out of trouble. And they're doing just that. The fact that it's common knowledge that Social Security will go bankrupt in less than 10 years, it hasn't done anything. In fact, numerous times the government has tried to reform the program to make it sustainable. And what has happened? The people rise up, vote the people out of office who dare to threaten their entitlements and vote people in who will promise to keep them flowing. They have no interest in their long-term survival. They only want what feels good now. They haven't experienced the pain. Now, if you're on the far right and you're thinking, well, maybe if we just get our guys in there, we'll get something done, you know? After all, the House and the Senate have the largest Republican majority since the Civil War. And we really have jack shit to show for it. And would you like to know why? Well, I was actually involved with the Tea Party from 2009 to about 2012. And there was a poll that was taken by CBS. And this poll appeared in an article written by CBS called Tea Party Supporters, Who They Are and What They Believe. And I can verify from my own personal experience that this is accurate. It says, quote, the vast majority opposes the health care reform bill. 62% say programs like Social Security and Medicare are worth the cost to taxpayers. The figure is even higher among Americans overall at 76%, unquote. So according to Americans as a whole, 76% support Social Security and Medicare, which are bankrupting us and will lead to our financial collapse. They will. 76% support them. Now, among the Tea Party, the forest of the far right, right? You know, the, the crazy kooks that want to take away everybody's everything. 62% support Social Security and Medicare. Still a clear majority, not as high as 76, but still a clear majority. And this is within the Tea Party. This is why the Tea Party failed. And now, you can't even get a majority of the Tea Party to talk about entitlement reform. How in the fuck are you going to get the American people to support entitlement reform? If you can't get the people to support it, you're not going to get the politicians to support it. This is the way it is. You know, I, I applaud those who have the faith in humanity that actually believe that people will listen to common sense and reason without having to feel pain. All I see around me are people who will not listen to reason until enough pain is inflicted upon them. Some people may listen to reason, but only when the subject is fairly neutral. When the subject will cause them pain, like performing a program that may cut their benefits, that causes pain. It doesn't matter how many charts you throw at them, it doesn't matter how many facts they have, they're going to oppose it because it causes pain. And the only way to overcome that is if the alternative causes more pain. But simply threatening them and saying, oh, this is going to collapse, blah, 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 they don't care. It doesn't matter if it's going to hurt later because reforming it hurts now. Just like getting obese will hurt later. You will die sooner. You will get all kinds of health problems. Your clothes won't fit. You'll feel bad. There are no positive benefits to being obese. So why don't people diet and exercise? Why do they wait so long? Why do they let things get so out of hand? We have an obesity problem because people can't control themselves, because people don't think about the long-term consequences of their choices. We are going to financially collapse because of entitlements, because people don't think about the long-term consequences of their choices. And that's fine. I've accepted that. I'm preparing for that. Are you? I have zero faith in the people. I do agree that when the pain begins, they will be open to reason. And I think the best thing we can do is let it be known that we warned you we were right and here is our alternative. Once you felt enough pain, you're ready to hear these answers. And this applies not just to obesity, not just to Social Security, Medicare, and other entitlements, but also to MGTOW. We make our videos not because we expect to convert all men. We make our videos so that the men who have felt enough pain and who are ready to hear this message will find this message and that it will help them. 
The rest of the men will be here when they're ready. And when they felt enough pain, they'll find us. Anyway, that's all I have to say right now. Part 4 will be coming out soon. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.